The sad story of the decline and fall of the British motor industry. After the Second World War in Europe, Europe was in ruins. So the American motor industry was, had the market pretty well to themselves and dominated the automobile world. In 1951, Britain's two leading motor manufacturers, Austin and Morris, Billy Morris and uh, Herbert Austin, the founders, merged to form the British Motor Corporation, which immediately catapulted BMC into third place among world motor manufacturers after GM and Ford, with Chrysler in fourth place. Here was a great opportunity for the British motor industry to consolidate its position in the world. Now, General Motors' famous marks were dripping with chrome <laughs> and great gas guddlers with huge engines uh, at the high water mark of the American dream in the 50s. Uh, even though that was when the Cold War was in operation uh, in the age of the atomic bomb. However, at that time, BMC, which was Austin, Morris, Woolsey, Riley and MG, exported most of their cars to America uh, while selling at a premium through their extensive network of distributors and dealers uh, in Britain, soon to be grouped under the banner of creative engineering. As an engineering apprentice, I was very proud of that fact at Longbridge in those days. BMC then held 50% of the UK market, but were in competition with Ford and General Motors, which was Vauxhall in England, and homegrown manufacturers Roots Group, Humber and Sunbeam, Rover, Jaguar and Triumph, plus a host of lesser marks, including Rolls-Royce and Bentley, all British-owned, British manufactured. Now, production was the key in the age of great demand for the first-time car buyers uh, with BMC, and the BMC factory at Longbridge and assembly plant at Cowley both suffered, however, from production bottlenecks and union problems at a time when they could or should have expanded more. So this slowed their progress, causing the corporation to lose a dominant market share, plus the fact that the home market were taking cars at a premium because there was a shortage, but British BMC did not take advantage of that. Whereas historically, Nuffield had always been a bit more profitable and everyone knows the Nuffield organisation today and hospitals and, and the huge organisation that uh, resulted from Billy Morris's operations. As the industry moved into the 1960s, demand still outstripped supply, while in 1958, a German motor industry, a resurgent German motor industry, overtook the British car production for the first time and became and began to export VW Beetles. Remember the VW Beetle? <laughs> Hitler's personal motor car, not his personal motor car, but Hitler's idea of the people's car developed later on. VW Beetle uh, and Auto Union uh, cars also um, in Britain and America. So, the decline and fall of the British-owned motor industry speeded up no end in 1968, when Donald Stokes, the boss of Leyland, which is mainly a truck and bus manufacturer, engineered the takeover of BMH, which was BMC plus Jaguar at that time, aided and abetted by Harold Wilson's government to form British Leyland, which was designed to become the new flagship of the British motor industry. It didn't achieve that. Unfortunately, faced with continuing union problems at home and even tougher competition from the European manufacturers, BL continued to lose market share. It was a slippery slope. In 1968, the French motor industry, Renault, Peugeot and Citroën, outpaced British car production. So you had 
Britain first and then Germany overtook them and then the French overtook them in 1968, followed a few years later by the Italian motor manufacturers spearheaded by Fiat. So by the end of the 1970s, the writing was on the wall for the British owned motor industry. BL leading to a link up ultimately with Honda and soon after a brief but disastrous tie up with the British aerospace industry. Finally, in the 80s, the demise of BL was complete with the merger with BMW, precipitating the unbecoming behaviour of a group of BL directors known as the Gang of Four. My quick history of the British motor industry, or more to the point, the demise of the British motor industry. A sad story indeed. Well, I really enjoyed that. I hope you did too. And if you did, please give us a like and subscribe. Thank you. Who is this man?